If you're interested in a rational, evidence-based approach to addressing climate change, which seems to be an ever-shrinking number of people, then I recommend you take the time to listen to Michael Schellenberger. Schellenberger has been an environmentalist all his life and was fully invested in the so-called renewable energy revolution. In fact, as he confesses in this TED Talk, he was an anti-nuclear activist. In the early 2000s, he helped form a labor union and environmentalist group called the Apollo Alliance that advocated for a huge investment in clean energy, which was subsequently picked up by the Obama administration, spending about $150 billion to help make renewables cheaper. In fact, it's not a stretch to suggest that had AOC been around a decade or so earlier, Schellenberger would probably have been a cheerleader for AOC's Green New Deal. But today, Schellenberger is stridently opposed to the idea. As he tweeted out recently, Bernie Sanders' 16 trillion Green New Deal is doomed to fail and impoverish millions. How do I know? For starters, I helped create the last one. The only Green New Deals that have worked were done with nuclear, which Bernie's would ban. And he lays out the case in this article in Forbes. Schellenberger has done a complete 180 on nuclear energy, is now one of its biggest advocates. What I appreciate about Schellenberger is that he knows both sides of the argument. He doesn't suffer from that problem that John Stuart Mill outlined more than 160 years ago. He's data-driven and looks at the evidence. And the evidence he presents against solar and wind in favour of nuclear energy is compelling to say the least. And he's also a voice of calm and reason in an increasingly alarmist narrative around climate change. And so to the hysteria that has been whipped up in recent days about the smouldering emergency taking place in the Amazon. That is, according to French President Emmanuel Macron and an assortment of overexcitable celebrities and other crazies. I mean, at this point, celebrities are probably the best contrary indicator for a cause worth supporting. So Macron Virtue tweeted this. Our house is burning, literally. The Amazon rainforest, the lungs which produces 20% of our planet's oxygen, is on fire. It is an international crisis. Members of the G7 summit, let's discuss this emergency first order in two days. Hashtag act for the Amazon. Now, perhaps Macron is confusing his own house with the Amazon, given that Paris has been intermittently on fire for the last nine months. Or perhaps he's trying to appease the Take Down Macron campaign started by climate activists in early August, unhappy with Macron's commitment to tackling the climate emergency. Yeah, whenever your scare campaigns aren't catching on, just change the name. Climate change, climate emergency. Oh, what's the difference? But the image in Macron's tweet does look disturbing. The only problem with it is, as the New York Times pointed out, was that it was taken by a photographer that has been dead for 16 years. And the photo itself is over 20 years old. But that didn't stop Leonardo DiCaprio posting it to his 35 million followers on Instagram. Madonna and Jaden Smith outdid Macron and DiCaprio posting a photo that was 30 years old. Ronaldo was a little more up to date tweeting out a photo from 2013 but of an area of southern Brazil nowhere near the Amazon. He too repeated the claim that the Amazon rainforest produces more than 20% of the world's oxygen. Now, as I said before, full credit to the New York Times and CNN for debunking those photos. And as CNN explained, deforestation is neither new nor limited to one nation. Whilst the New York Times noted that these fires were not caused by climate change. But as Michael Schellenberger noted in this article in Forbes titled, Why Everything They Say About the Amazon, Including That It's the Lungs of the World, Is Wrong... Both the New York Times and CNN repeated the claim that the Amazon is the lungs of the world. So Schellenberger turned to someone who, unlike Macron, DiCaprio, Madonna, Smith or Ronaldo, is an actual expert on the Amazon forest. Dan Nepstad had this to say about the lungs of the earth claim. It's bullshit. There's no science behind that. The Amazon produces a lot of oxygen, but it uses the same amount of oxygen through respiration. So it's a wash. What about the New York Times claim that if enough rainforest is lost and can't be restored, the area will become savanna, which doesn't store as much carbon, meaning a reduction in the planet's lung capacity. Also not true, said Nepstad, who was a lead author of the most recent intergovernmental panel on climate change report. The Amazon produces a lot of oxygen, but so do soy farms and cattle pastures. But the lungs myth is just the tip of the iceberg. Consider that CNN ran a long segment with the banner Fires Burning at Record Rate in Amazon Forest, while a leading climate reporter claimed the current fires are without precedent in the past 20,000 years. 
While the number of fires in 2019 is indeed 80% higher than 2018, something that DiCaprio repeated, it's just 7% higher than the average over the last 10 years. One of Brazil's leading environmental journalists agrees that media coverage of the fires has been misleading. It was under Workers' Party President Lula and Environment Secretary Marina Silva, 2003 to 2008, that Brazil had the highest incidence of burning, but neither Lula nor Marina was accused of putting the Amazon at risk. What is happening in the Amazon is not exceptional. Take a look at Google web searches for Amazon and Amazon forest over time. Global public opinion was not as interested in the Amazon tragedy when the situation was undeniably worse. The present moment does not justify global hysteria. And while fires in Brazil have increased, there's no evidence that Amazon forest fires have. What hurts me most is the bare idea of the millions of Notre Dame high cathedrals of terrestrial biodiversity burning to the ground, a Brazilian journalist wrote in the New York Times. But the Amazon forest's high cathedrals aren't doing that. I saw the photo Macron and DiCaprio tweeted, said Nepstad, but you don't see forests burning like that in the Amazon. Amazon forest fires are hidden by the tree canopy and only increase during drought years. We don't know if there are any more forest fires this year than in past years, which tells me there probably isn't. I've been working on studying those fires for 25 years and our on-the-ground networks are tracking this. What increased by 7% in 2019 are the fires of dry scrub and trees cut down for cattle ranching as a strategy to gain ownership of land. Against the picture painted of an Amazon forest on the verge of disappearing, a full 80% remains standing. Half of the Amazon is protected against deforestation under federal law. Deforestation declined a whopping 70% from 2004 to 2012. It has risen modestly since then, but remains at one quarter its 2004 peak, and just 3% of the Amazon is suitable for soy farming. Both Nepstad and Coutinho say the real threat is from accidental forest fires in drought years, which climate change could worsen. The most serious threat to the Amazon forest is the severe events that make the forest vulnerable to fire. That's where we can get a downward spiral between fire and drought and more fire. Today, 18 to 20 percent of the Amazon forest remains at risk of being deforested. So what is the result of all this unnecessary hysteria around the Amazon? Well, according to Nepstad, Macron's tweet had the same impact on Bolsonaro's base as Hillary calling Trump's base deplorable. There's outrage at Macron in Brazil. The Brazilians want to know why California gets all this sympathy for its forest fires and why Brazil gets all this finger pointing. Now, on the 30th of August, Schellenberger followed up with an article titled, Forget the Amazon Hype, Fires Globally Have Declined 25% Since 2003, thanks to economic growth. In it, Schellenberger reproduces a number of alarmist headlines and claims for the New York Times and says, Any reader of the New York Times and other mainstream media outlets would be forgiven for believing that fires globally are on the rise. But they aren't. In reality, there was a whopping 25% decrease in the area burned from 2003 to 2019, according to NASA. Between 2003 and 2015, the area burned in Africa declined by an area the size of Texas, 700,000 square kilometres or 270,000 square miles. And against the picture painted by celebrities in the mainstream media that fires around the world are caused by economic growth, the truth is the opposite. The amount of land being burned is declining thanks to development, including urbanisation. That's because the amount of land being converted into ranches and farms has been going down, not up. And because more of it is being done with machines than with fire. For the last 35 years, the world has been reforesting, meaning new tree growth has exceeded deforestation. The area of the earth covered with forest has increased by an area the size of Texas and Alaska combined. Less land is being converted into agriculture globally in part because farmers are growing more food on less land. So as usual, climate change hysterics have managed to create the opposite of what they intended. Instead of winning over more people to their point of view, they just make more people sceptical. As I said earlier, there's a good chance that if you take the other side of an issue that a celebrity endorses, you'll be right most of the time. Now, getting back to the issue of nuclear energy, I've said to a number of people in recent months, if you are serious about addressing climate change but dismiss nuclear energy, I can't take you seriously. And perhaps there is a glimmer of hope in the United Soviet Socialist Republic of Victoria. The LDP's David Limbrick, 
MP for the southeastern metropolitan region of Victoria, successfully passed a motion in the Upper House a couple of weeks ago for the government to open an inquiry into the benefits of removing nuclear prohibitions in Victoria. Currently, Victoria doesn't even allow the exploration and mining of uranium, even though our exports of uranium offset all the carbon dioxide we produce, making electricity from coal. Limbrick notes that similar inquiries are being held in New South Wales and at the federal level. Maybe, just maybe, amongst all the climate change hysteria, sanity will prevail. As usual, let me know your thoughts in the comments below. I'll see you next time.